Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Uh, we are back in Trino for some R&R coming off of the ending of Disc 2. And we're here specifically because Dr. Tot wanted to learn more about Aiko and the other summoners of Medain Sari, whom we now know Garnet, uh, Garnet was one of. And everyone else just sort of tagged along to forget their worries, forget their troubles. Including Vivi, who is now pretty close to his childhood home. Uh, remember, that's just outside of the city in a cave. Uh, Quan's dwelling. We visited it before. And in fact, we can have Vivi go and visit his childhood home. And since we're in control of Zidane, the main thing that we're going to be doing today is taking part in the... Oh god, the Tetra Master tournament in town. Uh, we also have a lot of active time events, of course, just so we can get a better feel for some of our other party members, including Amarin, who is still kind of an enigma to us. We don't really know that much about him, except that he has a keen interest in Zidane, and that he's really standoffish. Those are pretty much the only things that we know about him. Uh, we know that he was hired by uh, Queen Braun alongside Lani to do her, you know, kidnapping and assassination job. Hmm. Actually, no, not kidnapping. More of a theft. Uh, they were hired to steal the jewel from Garnet and to kill Vivi. And Amaranth had his own interest in Zidane. That's where we first learned about that. But with Queen Ron dead, I guess Lonnie and Amaranth are on their own now. So Amaranth's free to pursue whatever he wants, and he's still interested in following Zidane around and learning more about him. And through the active time events of uh, Trino here in Disc 3, we'll actually get to know a lot more about Amaranth. But first, we're going to head back to this palace and we're going to turn in the four or five Stellatio coins that we've gotten since the last time that we were, uh, that we were in Trino. Let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five. So this will be some gill, 5,000 gill. I think it'll be 10,000 or 8,000 next time. Uh, this will be an item. This one's not terribly exciting. It's just a single elixir. Which we should already have plenty of, but I'm not going to sneeze at more. It's just not that big a deal for being halfway done with the Stellatio coins. Yeah, 10,000 gil. So that's an easy way that we just picked up 15k. And we're not even done yet. This reward is one I'm way more excited about because this is a black belt. Among other things, it will teach us the passive HP plus 20%. And in fact, that's going to be really useful for Zidane for something that's coming up right now-ish. Uh, so we are going to, again, run past the card game uh, tournament, the hall that that takes place in. Uh, first, we'll cut back to an ATE, where the nobles are discussing their troubles. Oh, everything costs so much. I can't even afford this behemoth statue for my mansion. Huh. I guess city people have their problems, too. Hmm. And again, this, uh, forearm bandit, the con artist, is a regular fixture of the town. Ran into him last time, uh, when he pickpocketed Garnet. Then when we confronted him, we got something from him. This time, he wants uh, the bounty on Amaranth's head. And he's going to get it by trying to kidnap or harm Iko. Hey, it's Kina! Kina apparently didn't stick around in Medane Sorry, or they just got back. Over here is this 
creepy scammer offering to buy Ico dinner just to get her out of here and out of uh, out of earshot and out of view of the whole town. And Kina decides to take him up on his offer for food. Meanwhile, once again, he has dropped something. Running away from trying to scam us. Uh, and that is a Chimera armlet, which we're going to put that on. We have our Angel Bless from earlier. Uh, that'll be Mug. And a bunch of stats up, which honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely want that. And we will put our Black Belt on. Do we learn? No, everything that we want from uh, that is already learned. Now that's a fairly expensive upgrade in terms of just needing slots free, so. Gonna have to unequip Maneater. Gonna have to equip at least one more thing. We need three more slots freed up. Uh, Steel Gill is a pretty good candidate to, uh, to get rid of. Oh, and Beast Killer's four. Yeah, there's nothing I really want to get rid of in, uh, in order to get Beast Mass- uh, Beast Killer. I think add status will be too useful, and so will counter. So will be counter? Wow, that's a weird sentence construction. Uh, before we hit up the card tournament, there is one more thing that I want to do in town, uh, which is to come into the weapon shop and fight that beast that we saw last time. Take on that challenge. And just for some last minute preps, we're gonna put that 15,000 gil that we made to good use. Uh, we'll get that for Steiner, the Coral Sword, anything else. We actually really like something for Zidane, Twist Headman, mm. I think I, I specifically did not put a Twist Headman on Zidane even though we had one, uh, in favor of something that he was learning. Yeah, we'll just fight it. Didn't really need any of the items that we picked up. Uh, just the two that we equipped earlier. So we're gonna start this fight by actually using Soul Blade for once. Uh, because the weapon that we have on uh, can occasionally inflict confusion and Soul Blade will make it so that it guarantee hits him. Oh, this is a bad way to start off. This thing hurts like hell, uh, which is why confusion is so valuable against him. Because occasionally he'll make sure that his heave will hit himself, and that he'll waste one of his turns. Ah. Okay, so instead of a high potion, this is definitely one of those turns where we're going to need to pop an elixir. This is a pretty for real fight, especially for a one-on-one, -on -one, of which there are so many in Final Fantasy IX. Good, yes, this means we can start laying into him, instead of using all these turns defensively. Now we should only need to do that about three or four times. Good, 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 good. He's not confused anymore though, which is kind of scary. It didn't last as long as I was hoping it would. Uh, he also has Earthquake, which hurts a whole bunch. I don't think anything he does is more damaging than his heave. So we're gonna make sure he's good and confused again. If he hits himself with heave, this will make the fight go even faster. Come on! Yeah! Oh, good! So then this should be the last hit. Cool! This is one of those rare situations where Soul Blade is actually key. We get another 15,000 gil for all that. So it's like we spent nothing just now. Paid for our whole shopping trip. Now we can get back to the whole point of this episode, which is going to be to go and finally after almost 30 episodes of this LP, finally playing Tetra Master, which I was not prepared for. 
we read the rules to Tetra Master in that last video, that intermission. And holy shit, that wiki entry is awful. So people have tried to explain Tetra Master to me in a way that is better, and there's pretty much no way you can explain it in a way that's worse. Uh, so basically, if your card has an arrow facing the enemy card, but that card has no arrow, you just capture it. It's very Triple Triad-esque. Uh, if they both have arrows facing each other, the numbers then come into play, and every card has four numbers printed on it. Or four values, I should say, since... One of those is guaranteed not to be a number, and the other three can also just not be numbers. Yeah, might as well get... Wow, Lindblum has no attack value. Shiva seems fine. Yeah, I have a few things that will work out well, right? I don't want a zero, zero, zero. Oh, plus I have duplicates of all these, and some of the duplicates have higher values. <laughs> yeah, I'll grab the airship, probably. And then what's my final card? That actually seems fine, the Mosquito. We'll get some of these blocks on the 4x4 grid. I thought I, we would get a choice as to where to place them, but no. Uh, some of those spots are blocked off randomly. So if this is down here, then only something above or diagonally right can try to capture this, and they would have to engage in a card battle with it no matter what. Is what I... I oh, wait. Rama has no arrows at all. What is the point of Rama? I guess it's just to... Oh, shit. To occupy a spot. Like, put it in a spot where it would be difficult to take it? I don't know. Actually not sure what the point of Rama is. Hey, we got a combo. And that's because a bunch of arrows were facing each other in the card we captured and then the adjacent one. Oh hey, a draw. Fucking joyous. More Tetra Master to be played. Okay, so in order, the values on the cards at the bottom are their power, the battle class, the physical defense, and the magic defense. Uh, battle class determines what the power of each card is actually attacking against. And all of the numbers fall on like a hexadecimal scale. So zero would be the weakest possible value on a card. And then it goes up to 9, and then A is stronger than a 9, and then B, C, D, E, and F is going to be the strongest rating on one of those uh, values. But the part that makes this all really stupid is that... Oh. The numbers are not the numbers that are being evaluated when a battle takes place. Shit. Yeah. Um, I think this is bad. Yeah, I think this is... I think everything's going bad. Can I win with a big combo? Fuck. <laughs> um... No, I can't even pull a big enough combo off, I don't think. Cool, I lost Shiva, which is probably my most useful card. Oh uh, yeah, the numbers are not the numbers. They represent a range of possible numbers. Uh, and also the battle class can randomly upgrade too. So it still matters in that like an eight has a higher potential set of numbers. The potential of an eight is greater than that of a four. But that's still all it is, is potential. A weak card can still randomly just beat a stronger one. <laughs> for no real reason, and it's not within your control. So basically, just play your best cards and make the arrows line up good. And then hope, hope that the, the RNG is good for you. Cool. Cool. 
So we can probably take that. But then does that open me up to bad combos? Do I want to just play this here so I... Oh, no! That was actually... Mmm! What about placing this one here and just comboing that? I mean, that, that wasn't the combo that I was expecting. I just captured the adjacent two. So if I put this up here... Cool! Two... Zero, one... Okay. I guess I kind of mixed up for it. Still not sure what the point of Rama is, but I'm including him just in case I suddenly get inspired <laughs> to use him in a way that's like, oh, okay, I get it now. Uh, so suffice to say, not a match, not a master of Tetra Master, I am. Like, this game seems genuinely awful. I know I hate it on Triple Triad and the stupid additional rules that you encounter as you travel the world in 8, but I would really rather be playing Triple Triad right now. Grandpa didn't need anything towards the end. His cooking tools are badly damaged now. Oh, we actually see Quan. I learned the art of fulfillment without eating food. He, can't, he became a breatharian. <laughs> He got all of his nutrients by pointing his butthole towards the sun and photosynthesizing. Alright, second round of the tournament. Once we get past this one, uh, we will face the champion of Tetra Master. And we only get one shot at them. We can rematch the, uh, the first two rounds as many times as we want. And in fact, that winds up being kind of necessary because meeting the champion is tied to story progress. Rama, what is your point right now? What do I do with you, friend? Just gonna put him in a corner and just kind of hope that he sticks or that I can recapture him easily with a combo if he gets captured. Okie dokie. Okay. This looks good. Maybe I put this one here. And then... Okay. I was expecting to, like, kind of combo capture back my sword. So clearly, I don't... I still don't understand how the combos work exactly. But hey, we drew again. There was a physical deck building version of Tetra Master in Europe. Uh, and there was also a an online subscription based Tetra Master game, like a standalone one that was $1 a month. And it was running up until early this decade. I don't know if that was my best move. I don't really know what constitutes a best move in this game. Wait, it was zero to zero and it didn't just... Okay, I guess there can't just be draws. So a zero-zero contest wound up in mine being captured? Oh, wow, fuck. <laughs> Hopefully they take Rama, actually. Because I don't know what to do with this card. Cool. At least they didn't take one that, like... Seems useful. Nope, more ATEs. Yeah, for as much as I love FF9 and for as much as I have played it and tried to learn about it, Tetra Master escapes me in like playing it in a way that even resembles optimal. Oh, yeah, so Freya and Amaranth, who were on the verge of uh, getting into an all out brawl back in Alexandria Castle are actually talking now. Frey is investigating the mansion because there's rumors that it is owned by Kuja and she has in fact seen Kuja in there before. But what's the deal with Amaranth? We want to learn more about Amaranth. He was a security guard, an unemployed one now. And apparently he 
likely meaning Zidane one day showed up while he was at work. And of course we're interested in learning more. But not before we play some goddamn, uh, not Triple Triad, Tetramaster. Oh, I really wish I had Shiva still. <gasps> oh no, wait a minute, this is a, uh, This antlion is another one of those with no arrows, so I don't know what the, the point of those is? Are they just bad cards? Oh, well. Our record is one, two, and two. Oh, I hope this works out. Let's just fucking get rid of this. Yeah, it's really just to occupy a space. It's like, it, it's kind of filler. If it had good defensive stats, I could see the point of it. So far, I would kind of like that, uh, the Mist Demon. I hope I keep it, because those, the ones that you capture are the ones that you actually, fuck, that you actually get the choice. I can't recapture that. Wait, uh, maybe with a combo I could, but I don't think I can combo that, right? Fuck. Either way, I won. Uh, the cards that you capture are the ones that you get to choose from to take. Okay, now we have advanced to the final round. We only get this one chance, so he even advises you to save scum this if you really want to win. Uh, but I don't recall anything super valuable you get for winning. So instead, we are going to just... Oh yeah, of course, the he that Amara is referring to is Zidane. He was working as a security guard at this mansion, looking for a fight, didn't matter who, as long as it was strong. And Zidane, remember, is a thief. So apparently, long ago, when Amaret was working as security for the mansion, he broke in, stole something, left, and ran into Amaret. And instead of getting into the fight that Amaret was looking for, Zdane makes it seem like Amory is the one who stole from the mansion. <laughs> That's why he's suspicious. Just look at him. God, this is stupid. Truly mighty ones don't flaunt their power. The sly eagle hides its claws. Same thing that Dane told him last time. Uh, that they... Within the story, uh, that we saw. I should say the same thing you told him earlier. <laughs> Raya finds that very amusing. But Amory doesn't hold a grudge against him, just needs to understand him. And why Zidane thinks that you don't flaunt power if you have it. So really, Despite Amaret being such a dickhead, he's mostly just curious. He's mostly just curious about Zidane and his whole philosophy. Apparently, the four-armed man did not buy Keena dinner. Try to travel and eat many foods. Why well, you need Gil? Can't eat without Gil. Light on water look like food. It's just an illusion. Maybe it's real. You will jump in. No, I drown if I jump. But hungry. <laughs> oh god damn it. It's so good. Now do we get it if nope. So let's try the other side of the screen. Hopefully get the prompt for the next active time event, and then we will go and face the champion. And advance the story, finally. Oh, so Dr. Tot's finally gonna get to talk to Aiko about Medane Sari a little bit. Hmm. 
This is the revelation for Dr. Tot that none of the other summoners have survived to this day, aside from Iko and Garnet. Teach me how to become a graceful princess like her. Ah. Rumbustious. Is that supposed to be ram uh, rambunctious? Or... Hmm. The legendary crystals. Uh, that they traded right before Iko and crew left. So one was given to Clara, one was given to Lindblom, one was kept in Alexandria, and the last one was left in Medain Sari. And Aiko suddenly is overcome with a bad feeling, so she's going to race back. Meanwhile, we're still gonna have our fun uh, playing our last round of Tetra Master for the LP. <laughs> God, I don't like this card game. And hey, it turns out that the champion is Regent Sid of Lindblom. But because he is an Oglop, he cannot register for the tournament himself. Uh, people think that that is freakish and horrible, and they hate Oglops. Go away, you filthy Oglop, they say. So instead, Aaron registers for the tournament on his behalf and just claims him to be her pet. Apparently he kicks ass at Tetra Master. Even though his mind has deteriorated from being an Oglop, Uh, so all of her cars are Oglop themed. And I have no expectation of beating her. But this is not a terrible assembly of cards. Aside from the sword. Wish I had Shiva! Wish I could have stolen Shiva back from the guy who uh, won it off of us the first time. Apparently wasn't using it in his deck, even though he took it from us. Yeah, so this 1P10, uh, Oglop just beat our 2P01. Makes sense. I think that third value is the physical one and the fourth is magic, so... Hey. This is not going terribly. Until he just wins all of this with one combo right now. Yeah, that's a draw. Two, two, and three. Hmm. It's too much Tetra Master for my tastes. Three opponents, and we have played now seven matches. This being the eighth. I hate going first. I would rather kind of play reactively. Uh, I think this is the best move I can make. Well, fuck. Okay, good. We got combo. Uh, oh no. So I think I want to... Yeah, I really want to put that in that middle square and hopefully capture multiple things at once. That was not the right card. I think I just blew that. Yep. Oh, I even lost that exchange. Great. Oh, no, I lost the zoo. Oh, what well, I do with these Tetra Master cards? Uh, so the thing about Tetra Master is that Unlike in FF8, there are really no gameplay implication to collecting or having cards. Uh, there's no implication of, like, uh, card modding or anything like that. So, losing cards, unless you really are just into collecting uh, or playing the game for the sake of playing the game, it doesn't matter.
And finally, Ico shows up. If we had not watched the active time event, we would have no idea why she's suddenly showing up. And also, Sid came here to test uh, his new airship. Someone chilling behind the statue. While the moon still shines blue, by dawn it will turn to scarlet hue. Hey, it's Kuja. In the Alexandrian Square. Calling upon Bahamut. We knew this would happen sooner or later. Didn't expect it to be this soon, huh? city is burning. Showing the goofy hippo family fleeing kind of undermines a little bit of the gravitas of the moment. They look so bad. So here is where something that we could have done in disc one will come into play. Uh, there is a correct order to how you assign the uh, Knights of Pluto, which tasks you assign them to. Uh, if you spend time talking to the guards back in Disc 1, you get some hints about who goes where and who does what. Uh, so, for instance, gathering information, we want uh, uh, Blitzen and Koo to go and gather info. Then we want... Uh, Weimar and Hagen to go and protect the townspeople. Uh, contacting Lindblom to request reinforcements. We want, uh, let's see, that would be, yeah, Bryreich and Laudo? Jesus, I'm gonna butcher some of these names. And then, last but not least, these two for cannon duty. And this is the technically correct, uh, pairings for every task, so we get the angel earrings for doing that. And that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.